Hey guys, welcome back. So today is an exciting day because it's compost delivery day. I actually didn't think I was going to need more compost, but it never fails. I always need more compost. All right guys, so compost is here. It's been delivered. So one thing I wanted to mention with this is not every company is treated equally. So from my experience, I have been able to find a really awesome compost uh, producer. They do really well. It's really good quality compost. But the one time I wasn't able to order from them in the five years of me ordering from them was my second year garden. I waited too long to expand the garden and I didn't order compost until May and the company I typically order from was out. So I went with the secondary company and their compost was not good. If you're unsure in your area, go to Facebook, join some garden groups. I'm part of a few Kansas garden groups. Ask local in your nurseries. They will have some resources for you on some people. We were really fortunate to know a pretty awesome gardener here in town that gave us this little information. But either way, um, this is your note. If you haven't ordered compost yet, do it because there's a lot of people gardening this year. So for example, I've had so many people this week reach out to me because they're starting their first gardens this year and I could not be more excited for them. And if you're watching this video, figure out your compost scenario. All right guys, so it is the next day and the plan for today, I think, is to get this in-ground space done and potentially plant out all of my onions. I need to get these onions planted out sometime this week and I think today would be a really good day. We're supposed to get some rain on Thursday. It's currently Tuesday. Yeah, yeah. moving that soil yesterday was a lot more work, especially in this in-ground space. I uh, probably should have had my husband take down one of those wood panels because it was really hard for me to lift the wheelbarrow over that by myself. Last time we did that, I had his help, but I, I, I was persistent and I got it done, minus the mulching. So that needs to get done. I don't really want to move all of this soil twice, so I don't think I'm going to get all of it moved today either. I need to fill up a bunch of grow bags and all of that jazz as well. And I'd rather not move seven cubic yards twice because I have done that before with five cubic yards. Oh, wow. So you guys remember, I don't know. I think I mentioned this last week actually. So I had a ton of hyssop planted in the ground and I had no idea if it was gonna come back because we completely tore up this entire space. We have some hyssop popping up. We have some volunteer hyssop. So I actually might pull that out and try to pot that up today as well. All right, so onion planting is pretty easy. Once your soil can be worked, you can go ahead and plant out onions. I probably could have planted these out two weeks ago now, but honestly, as of today, we are officially four weeks out from our official last frost. And with onions, you wanna plant them out in that four to six week window. But for me, the last two weeks of April can be hit or miss. So I kind of push everything back just a few weeks, just to be cautious. So, all right, so this year I planted three different varieties. I've done Australian brown, cab red, and also Spanish yellow. You can see they're very densely planted, but that's okay. They're really easy to pull apart. I only do this with my onions because their roots are really wiry. I did plant these onions the last week of December for anyone that is interested on when I planted them from seed. Okay, so yesterday I kind of just put my head down and planted the onions. It took me about two and a half hours to do the whole thing. I forgot 
how tedious planting onions are. It's a very tedious process, kind of like garlic, but garlic isn't as bad because you can just mulch it really easily over the top. So I did lightly mulch the onions. Um, I had to go through and make sure all of the little green leaves were over the top and that they weren't just bent over with the mulch. So that was a whole other thing. Come a few weeks, I will mulch these more once they get a little bit more established, but I wanted to make sure that they were just mulched a little bit because these guys are tender and whatnot. So I did harden these off on and off for a week before planting them. That's what I've done last year as well and I had a pretty good onion harvest so fingers crossed I get a good onion harvest again this next year. I am hardening off some broccoli over here and some cabbage. I might actually go throw them inside here in a little bit because they've already been out for a few hours. I don't exactly know if I'm going to get those planted out or not because we are doing our hoop house. So last week I told you guys I was going to make a video talking about the redo of our hoop house that's on a hinge and it opens and whatnot well after bending the hoops it's a little heavier than expected and we're trying to figure out the logistics of building it before talking about it so that might be a few weeks off and if I don't get these planted I'm really not too disappointed I really just wanted to plant broccoli and cabbage in the fall and I really wasn't too concerned in the spring regardless but since we are about to get a bunch of rain in the next two days one thing I want to do today is actually build some pea trellises and get some peas direct sown and then I also need to direct sow I want to direct sow a kale plant because I've been doing a lot of juicing lately and using a ton of kale I think that's like the only time I really use kale I'm gonna build teepees out of these for the peas and then and once the peas are done in the spring, I will plant them with beans. The other thing I want to do today as well, since we're about to get a bunch of rain, is kind of getting a little bit windier. You can tell that weather is going to be coming in soon. Um, is I want to spray the yard with beneficial nematodes in all my garden beds. So in the fall, I sprayed with beneficial nematodes for grub reasons. And when I was moving some compost the other day behind my shed, that's where a lot of the grubs were. I actually noticed there wasn't many grubs. There's only like four in the whole area and we actually had all of our earthworms back. So one reason I ended up realizing we were having such a problem last year is because all of my earthworms pretty much went missing and I really had an extreme grub problem on my hands. So to see that I'm having populations of worms again all through my compost and that I only had a handful of grubs entirely, that gives me a good sign that those are really working. And I wanted to do one more round just because I figured going into winter, I would probably need another round in the spring. So I'm gonna get to it because there's a lot of work to be done today. Building a trellis out of garden stakes is easy. You just need some twine, a pair of scissors, and of course some garden stakes or some large sticks. To start, I place each stake about a foot apart from each other, then gather the tops and tie them together. Then starting off at the bottom of one of the stakes, I'll tie off the twine and then continue to wrap the twine, keeping tension until I reach the top. Then I just tie it off and I'm done. So I'm growing a snow pea called the Oregon Sugar Pod 2 from Botanical Interest. I'm going to push just this mulch over and I'm going to plant on kind of the inside of the trellis more so. With peas, you can soak them in water before planting, but like I said, since we're getting all that rain for the next two days, I'm not even going to worry about it. That's one reason why I like to plant things uh, right before it's going to rain. So these go about an inch deep, two inches apart, so I think I'll be able to fit probably like 12 maybe a little bit more than 12 on each one so also right here i'm going to sow some beets some spinach and then also that kale i was talking about this is mostly stuff for me to harvest pretty early and just use for juicing like i was saying let me get that weed out while i was at it so i think the one big thing a lot of beginner gardeners make i know i personally made it i think for the first two years of gardening actually i really did not know the difference between cool crops and crops that are your typical summer crop so for example i was planting lettuce in june when typically that's when i've noticed my lettuce is pretty much done by um so it's really interesting i also never planted anything out in my garden before my last frost date until last year no 2020 when i really started to dig a lot deeper into everything gardening that was my what third year gardening so i mean it took me three years to really understand that and i never understood why a lot of my leafy greens 
would never really do well or they would bolt or why I was having issues with certain things with pest when I probably shouldn't have. So, I mean, that's the big thing. If you're going out, a lot of nurseries will have cabbage starts and broccoli starts right now. You want to go ahead and plant those now, but come like another three or four weeks, you're probably going to be a little late to plant them. And that's why I was saying with my starts over there, if I don't get to plant them probably by this weekend, um, I'm probably just not even going to worry about it. Our springs here in Kansas Zone 6B, I've noticed just get really warm really fast. We tend to have a few random cold days in between. Um, but for the most part, it's really hard to do a lot of those cool crops past a certain point. A lot of this stuff will be starting to get harvested completely by the time I really plant out this bed for summer. Another thing I definitely made a mistake of um, in my beginning years of gardening was not secession sowing or even really knowing what secession sowing is. So I personally like to secession sow a lot with uh, beans because beans add nitrogen back into the soil after it's already been taken out. So for example, with my onions and my garlic, both of those are pretty heavy feeders and they also take a lot of nitrogen out of the soil. So I like to go back through with beans since beans help replace those nitrogen in the soil just to help amend while also getting a secondary crop. You can tend to harvest beans within like a 55 to 60 day window, which is pretty fast. So I always tend to keep a lot of beans on hand. And if I ever see any gaps in my garden or if I pull something out my garden, I will typically just go ahead and sow some beans. So let that be a note to you. Beans are really easy. They're delicious. They're really easy to freeze and preserve. So I personally really like them. So it's been a few hours. I just went inside and mixed up my nematode solution. So when it comes to spraying nematodes or releasing any beneficial insect for that matter, you don't want to do it in the heat of the day. That's one reason why I waited a few hours. It's almost close to five now. So the sun's really shifted out. One reason for that being is most things need to get established. And if you're throwing them out in the heat of the day, they're probably not going to get established. Another thing to note with nematodes is you want to make sure the areas you're spraying it is moist and ready to go since they are a microscopic worm. They need an area to be established, especially right as you spray. So I went and I sprayed the entire garden down with that. But one thing I will make sure to do is I will link my video that I made um, late fall about nematodes. I go into a lot more detail when it comes to everything like that. One thing I did do that um, I did film for you guys is when I take the nematodes out of their package, I like to actually mix it with water before throwing it into the sprayer just to make sure everything's well dissolved because you don't want to have any clumps and it's just makes, I feel like it makes a difference. I don't know. I'm going to go ahead and get the garden sprayed. I think I'm going to go ahead and end today's video here. Thank you guys so much for joining me the last few days, getting the garden ready for spring and planting a few things. Either way, guys, I'll see you all next week. Bye.